Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our virtual Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're going to begin with a pre-service meditation. So for the next 10 minutes, we're just going to sit in the silence. And I invite you right now to just get comfortable. Close your eyes. It can help if you're seated to just make sure that your spine is erect, that you are relaxed but not in a position where you might tend to fall asleep. And let's just take a nice deep breath together. Breathing in, and as we release that breath, just release any thoughts of the past. Once again, breathing in, and as we release that breath, just letting go of any tendencies to think about the future, coming into this now moment just giving us ourselves the gift of being in the now. And let's use the breath as a focal point to keep our minds in the present moment. As you breathe in, you may want to silently say to yourself, breathing in. As you breathe out, breathing out. You can pay attention to the sensations of the air coming into the nostrils and how it feels different as you exhale, or noticing the chest expanding and then contracting. But just keeping the awareness on the breath. And if the mind wanders, which it has a habit of doing over and over again, Take this opportunity to develop that witness consciousness where you just notice without judgment, with compassion, where your mind went. So just be aware. Maybe notice if there are any feelings going on, any sensations. Be with it for a moment without judgment and then bring your awareness back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
And so gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your body, just noticing the weight of your body on whatever you're seated on. You can maybe wiggle your fingers and toes, shrug your shoulders. And as you feel ready, just open your eyes. So once again, thank you so much for joining us this evening via Facebook Live or Zoom. And a special welcome to those of you who joined us during the meditation. Let's begin our service with our opening chant led by the wonderful Mary Hyland. Thank you, Mary. So with that, let's join together in prayer. Just letting those words, God is in this place, carry us deeper into the awareness that God is in every place. Because truly, God is the one life, the one power, the one infinite, invisible pure goodness, pure lovingness, pure joy and wholeness, abundance, intelligence, every form of good we can imagine or claim is the nature of this one out of which all things are created and that lives and expresses itself throughout all that is, including me, including each and every person gathered for this service. I absolutely know that God is unfolding throughout our time together and that we feel its presence as that vibration of love that brings us together, that allows us to feel our connection, that inspires each person who is of service this evening. I know it is God's beauty and inspiration that flows through Mary as she leads us in our chants and as she performs her musical message for us this evening. I know it is God that inspired the message that has spoken through me. I open myself to just being a channel through which the divine delivers that message that we all have come to hear, that message that reminds us of that divine nature at the center of our being. And so I know that all that unfolds is good because it's all driven by God. And so in gratitude, I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is wonderful, and hopefully it is full of laughter. <laughs> so I'm looking at this idea this evening of you gotta laugh. You know, back in the 1960s, political journalist and author Norman Cousins brought to light the beneficial effects of laughter in promoting physical healing um, after facing some major illnesses himself. Uh, he talks about it in his book, Anatomy of an Illness as Perceived by the Patient. And he claimed that laughter and a positive attitude contributed tremendously to his healing of a collagen disease from which doctors said that he had one in 500 chance of recovery. Now back then, you know, a lot of people were skeptical. Today, I think medical science is much more accepting of this idea that a positive mental attitude can contribute to physical healing. I think certainly the medical field is aware of what some negative mind patterns, a lot of worry and stress uh, can create negative effects and physical ailments. They're aware of that. And I think everyone would agree that laughter certainly alleviates stress. So probably we'd have a lot of agreement out there in the medical field uh, as well that laughter can be a very positive, health-promoting thing. Now, in science of mind, in new thought in general, we would have agreed with what Norman Cousins was saying from the very beginning. You know, one of the key tenets of our teaching is that our mindset, our beliefs, our pre predominant thought patterns impact our mental and physical health and our experience of life in general. You know, the more we perceive the goodness of God's nature at our core, the more we sense that there's an innate goodness to us, to all beings, to life itself, then the more we're going to experience that goodness in our lives, the more we're going to call it forth, the more we have a sense of the natural order is one of health and wholeness and abundance, the more we're open to all the ways that we can experience those qualities of God within us. So all the spiritual practices that we promote in this teaching are for the purpose of supporting our expansion in consciousness to more fully embrace this sense of our oneness with God, our oneness with all creation, to sense that underlying potential of God's goodness in all beings in all situations. And so, you know, we do our work to really expand our consciousness. How many of us see humor and laughter as a component of our spiritual practice. You know, I think we look at spiritual practice as something that takes discipline, right? It takes a certain amount of tenacity to have a regular spiritual practice um, because it's something that our ego can resist. You know, our spiritual practice leads to growth and evolution and change, and the ego isn't so comfortable a lot of times. I don't know if I want to grow. I don't know if I want to move out of for and start forgiving. You know, it can get uncomfortable. So it's something that we often need to commit to in order to experience the payoff that it provi provides of more love, more joy, more abundance, greater health, uh, all kinds of goodness in our lives. So I think it's easy to overlook silliness, playfulness, laughter as a real component of spiritual practice. And I was thinking, you know, for the many of us who were raised in the Western world, in this culture, in this country, you know, we 
most of us either grew up in Judeo-Christian traditions or we were at least exposed to them. And I thought, shouldn't we draw inspiration from all those images that are presented of the great masters, the artwork, the sculptures, the paintings, you know, that show Abraham, Moses, Jesus, the disciples, just cracking up, just like laughing their heads off. I mean, shouldn't we try to follow that example? Oh, well, actually, come to think of it, there are no such paintings. <laughs> or at least I haven't seen any. And I think that probably the most we get from most of the artwork or representations we have of you know, highly evolved spiritual beings that we are supposed to follow, or maybe a benevolent smile. <laughs> That's about it. So subliminally, I think it puts this idea of laughter, humor, you know, playfulness is, is great, you know, it's all wonderful, but not necessarily a part of spiritual practice. Now, our founder, Ernest Holmes, when he was addressing a group of ministers and practitioners, apparently encouraged them to take the work that they do. So, you know, he was saying, we should take the work that we do as ministers and practitioners of this teaching. We should take it seriously, but we should never take ourselves too seriously. And I really believe he would have added to that or take life too seriously. And I'm really kind of proud of how much I've taken that teaching to heart. Um, but I want to be clear that this isn't about being flippant about everything. It's not encouraging, encouraging us not to show concern, caring, awareness of pain, suffering, you know, the negative things that are going on in the world. But what do we say in Science of Mind over and over again? God is at the center of everything. So even in the most horrific circumstances, human circumstances, God's potential of good is there. And I believe that finding things to laugh at, even if it's maybe not the situation in front of us, that might be challenging sometimes, because let's face it, we can be confronted with some pretty horrific conditions in the world. But if we can find something to put our attention to that causes us to laugh, it can extricate us from that mindset that's so mesmerized by the problem and open us to looking for the solution, open us to a different perception, a way out of the darkness and into the light. And I have to say that I really feel I was very blessed growing up in you know, my household and whether it was here or abroad in France with my family there, humor always seemed to be a part of our family. We laughed a lot. And it's not that we didn't face a lot of difficult things at different times as a family, but laughter was always part of our lives. And when I first heard that quote I shared from Ernest Holmes about not taking ourselves too seriously, I flashed on a story that my father shared with me about one of his experiences. So my dad um, was a uh, political scientist, and you know he moved up the ladder. He was a professor at University of British Columbia, but he got involved in the World Political Science Organization. And apparently, I mean, I didn't realize uh, much of my life just how far up the ladder he went and people that he knew until he was commissioned by Nelson Mandela and Henry Kissinger and uh, Lord Carrington and a group of others to go to Africa to put, give some input on situ a situation that was going on there. Um, but so he traveled a lot and he became the president of the World Political Science Organization. 
And he was very proud. He boasted about it. He was one of the first travel light individuals. He learned how he could go on these you know, worldwide trips, and he would travel with one shirt and uh, you know, undies and a pair of socks. And so you know, after the first day, he would wash what he had been wearing and then let it dry. But he had another clean pair to wear the next day. Then the, the next you know, the clothes he had washed would be dry. So if he was gone four or five days, he could do with that. So all of his luggage was his briefcase. And there was one time that he felt so good because his flight to Rio de Janeiro to a conference had been delayed. But because he had everything in his briefcase, when he got off the plane, while everyone had to go wait for luggage, he was able to just walk straight out to take a cab to the conference center. He said as he was walking in, he, he was being introduced. He walked right up to the podium, put his briefcase on the podium, opened up, and out fell his underwear <laughs> in front of everyone. Now, that could be a little unsettling, a little unnerving, a bit embarrassing. And I'm sure he had a moment of embarrassing, embarrassment, but he just laughed his head off, giving permission to everyone else to laugh. So here are all these high bucky bucks, and they're all just laughing in this situation. And then, you know, when the laughter died down, he proceeded to give his presentation. And the spiritual lesson in that, for me, was the idea that he was not identifying with the human condition. He saw it as a mishap. I, I know he never repeated it, or he didn't share it if he did. But it happened. He had his moment of embarrassment. He laughed, and then he moved forward. And when I was first thinking about this um, theme for, for my talk this evening, I was reminded of a story that the Buddhist nun Pema Chodron, whose works I really, really love. I love her teachings. She shared, um, for those who don't know, prior to becoming a Buddhist nun, she had actually been married twice. She had two children. And at one point, she was visiting with one of her sons. And um, she had misplaced her water bottle. And she said she has a tendency to fixate on things like that. And she was just going crazy trying to find the water bottle, looking under cushions, thinking they should call the mall to see if she left it there. And her son, who had just read his first book on Buddhism, turned to his son, so her grandson, and said, uh, see, grandma is suffering a lot because she's so attached to her water bottle. <laughs> and that bit of humor, she said, just pulled her out of it. She could step out of that situation and see what was going on and make a different choice and just you know, laugh at herself for where her mind got caught up in this, I have to find my bottle. And you know, I thought, how beautiful that someone, this is a woman who's written how many books to help us along our spiritual journey, that she can laugh at herself and help us then to be able to laugh at ourselves in moments like that. And you know, granted, these examples, my dad's situation or Pema Chodron's situation that I shared, are not life-altering or you know, life-shattering moments. But you know, the more we have the ability to call forth humor and the ability to laugh at ourselves or laugh at situations day by day, we, we build that muscle that's able to look at things from a lighter angle and make different choices. And it can help us to maintain that part of us that could stay connected with that playfulness no matter what. And one of my greatest, or well, there are actually two that I want to share, real um, great examples of that. I've spoken before about a dear friend many years back at age 26 who died of complications with AIDS. And in the last weeks of his life, he was blind, he was bedridden. And yet, I remember just days before he made his transition that the group of us were gathered with him in his room. And he was just doing these mock commercials about all these different products he had with him, around him, that were helping him to have as close to a normal life as he possibly could. I mean, he 
was laughing his head off. We were laughing to the point of tears falling down our faces in the midst of this incredibly tragic situation. I mean, for us, that we were going to be losing our friend. And the other example that came to mind was my husband's uncle, Robert, who I was visiting up in Santa Barbara until a couple of years ago when he made his transition, and who was in an Alzheimer's um, section of an assisted living place in the last um, two years or so of his life. And when I would go up to see him, very often I would say, you know, I was thinking we could go do this or that, and he would just look at me with one of these looks, and then he would say, I'm confused. But that's normal these days, so just show me the way, let's go, whatever you want to do. It was that ability, he was aware of what was going on with his mind, and yet he was able to step back and laugh at it. And I think in these two examples that I've shared, um, they speak to me to this idea of, in the midst of our major human challenges, you know, these people could stay aligned with the parts of themselves that were untouched, that were still able to laugh, still able to love, still able to express and experience beauty. It goes back to the idea that we reinforce over and over again that we are not defined by our human conditions or human situations, nor are we confined by them. Regular doses of laughter, I think, keep aligning us with a part of us that can feel playful and find pathways into joy and light no matter what. So what I'm going to recommend is that we all take inventory as to how much are we giving ourselves the opportunity to laugh. I really recommend to you Find things that make you laugh, whether it be things that you read, it could be things, that, gosh, there's so much stuff on YouTube right now, uh, you know, so, much, so many forms of entertainment, whatever. But how often do you bring your awareness to things that just make you laugh? And as you do, note that this is that playful aspect of God's nature that's being expressed through you. And then I would also invite us as we do our inner work, you know, as you're meditating or journaling and you're coming across those thought and mind patterns that create anxiety, anger, sadness, frustration, see if you can look at it from a playful or a humorous angle. You know, I, an example would be when I catch myself inwardly grumbling, complaining, or just being really frustrated with it, something, and just really my mind spinning, I'll just have this little voice that comes up and says, hey, Rev, how's that working for you? Something like that, or maybe noticing an old pattern or coming up, insecurity, fear, whatever, and just go, oh, that old mindset again. It's just there's a way we can bring just a lighter perspective to it. And as we incorporate that lighten up mindset into our spiritual practices, and all we do, you know, in everything that we do, we just keep turning to that more humorous, more playful aspect of our minds. Guess what happens? we experience a more, much more lightness, much more playfulness and joy in our lives. Seriously. <laughs> so, I'm gonna ask you to turn your attention inward. And I invite you to call to mind an image of anything that you find humorous. Anything that you find funny, whether it actually makes you laugh outwardly or just silently inwardly, it maybe brings a smile to your face. And notice that all it took was bringing your awareness to an idea that you perceived as funny or playful. 
for you to experience that energy. It's within you at all times. It's God's playfulness, God's joy, ever present to be experienced and expressed. And now see if you can identify some negative thought or behavioral pattern that you engage in. Worry, unforgiveness, frustration, whatever comes up. See if you can view it from an angle of playfulness, of humor. You know, maybe using that, oh, well, how's that working for me? Or, hmm, there we go again with that, huh? Maybe dramatize it, oh, the toils and tribulations of being human. But just notice how the energy around that pattern changes for you to deal with it and move beyond it in a lighter, more playful way. And acknowledge that this light, playful side of God's nature is always there to lighten the journey through life. And so from this place in consciousness, let us join together in knowing the truth that indeed that presence of God is present everywhere throughout creation, including through and as each and every one of us gathered for this virtual service this evening. And as we know that God is in all places, all beings, all things, let us know that wherever there's any discomfort going on with change, that the nature of God is changeless, birthless, deathless, and that it is ever present as an essence that we can call forth and experience in some new way as things change in the world that may seem difficult for us initially. God is always there. Let us know that this nature of God is one of perfect health and wholeness. And so where there are human experiences of dis-ease and discord, we know that those are temporary effects. And as we remember the truth of God's absolute wholeness, health, vitality, well-being, being ever-present at the center of all, the pathways into that greater wholeness and health, that well-being are all absolutely revealed. Let us join in remembering that this vibration of God is a creative energy that always seeks to give of itself and take in of itself, and that each of us is imbued with that nature and special gifts that we have to share. And let us know for anyone that is feeling unfulfilled that that vibration of God is revealing the perfect pathways for outer expression in which they are valued and appreciated, and that life fulfills itself through them. For those who are experiencing any kind of challenge with lack and limitation, we remember that the nature of God is limitless, boundless, infinite. And it is that infinite giver, receiver in us that as we open to it, it provides beyond our needs so we can generously give back to life. And Absolutely, let us remember that the core nature of this one is love. And as we remember that that love resides in every being, it heals every form of discord. Let us know its presence right now in those parts of the world, like the Middle East right now, where there is such discord that the key essence of everyone is love. And that love comes forth to heal any of our senses of differences, it allows us to have greater love for ourselves and others. And knowing that the impulse of love is always for good, 
Let us set our own individual intentions for greater good in silence. And so whether these intentions are for greater good for ourselves, loved ones, situations in the world, let us absolutely know that God is absolutely present at the center of all these situations. And as we know this truth, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with a heart filled with gratitude for knowing this truth, that I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen. So this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. And so uh, just a reminder of the different ways that you can give. Uh, we will be here after the service for about 15 minutes. Uh, if you'd like to call into the church office to give your donation over the phone via credit or debit card, that's area code 818-762-7566. Or, of course, you can give online at nhcrs.org forward slash give. And that takes you straight to our donation page where you can make a one-time or a recurring uh, gift, set it up there. Or you can text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. Um, and of course, you can continue to mail checks in if you prefer to do it that way. However you're supporting us, again, we're just so grateful, uh, grateful that we can continue to be here for you, thanks to you supporting this community. And so with that, let's just bring our intentions into our awareness of the good that these tithes do in the world, hold our hands to our hearts and say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you.
so as we bring our service to a close, uh, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who's been of service for us this evening. Uh, let's start out there in virtual land. Thank you to Gail Pallott and Bob Lyon, uh, practitioners who are holding vigil for us this evening. Uh, to our wonderful Zoom team out there, Barbara Berg, Brenda Jordan, and Alma Alvarez. Uh, I imagine Ray Regan is also out there. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. And as always, I'd say 99% of the time, thank you to Melissa Allen for the support on Facebook Live. Here in the sanctuary, thank you once again to Adam for making sure we're seen and heard up here. To our awesome tech team out there, Doreen, you have no idea where I'm pointing. I'm pointing way to the back of the room. <laughs> Doreen and Mark and Blair, thank you, thank you. Nikki on camera here. And to our wonderful Mary, and thank you to Sam Krieger who pre-recorded the accompaniments. So beautiful job, thank you, Mary. Perfect. Um, so, once again, just a quick reminder, uh, if you didn't catch it earlier, you can do your donations if you want to call into the church after service um, to do a donation of the phone. You can go to the website nhcrs.org forward slash give, or you can text the word give to 818-457-3419. Please know that Prayer with a Practitioner is available uh, on Zoom after the service. If you're on Facebook Live, just go to our website, nhcrs.org, get the Zoom link, and you can join, and we'll connect you up with a practitioner um, for prayer, and you'll, that'll be in a private breakout room. Uh, you can email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org, or you can call into the church, and uh, option number four, on the uh, phone menu allows you to leave a voicemail message with any prayer requests you might have. And we check those emails and voicemails every evening and send those out to our practitioners. So you'll be well supported in prayer. And I should also mention a ministry that Mary Highland leads, which is Dial a Prayer. You can also call in during the week if you want to hear pre recorded reading and uh, prayer from a practitioner to be uplifted by that. That's option three on our phone menu. So that's available anytime. Uh, Wednesday evening service continues. We'll be back next week, uh, same time, same place. And my topic will be spiritual reprogramming. <laughs> feeding the homeless. Our love and kindness ministry will be feeding the homeless this Sunday, May 16th. Uh, if you're interested in supporting this ministry, just go to our website. You can get more information about it. And if you haven't already heard, we have limited in-person attendance this coming Sunday in the sanctuary. We're starting to come back in person. So we're really excited to report that. And uh, there will only be the one service, 9.45 a.m. We'll continue to stream on Facebook Live and Zoom. And uh, so if you'd like to be here in person, uh, we still have slots available. You can go to the website to sign up uh, or call into the church office tomorrow. And um, we'll give you the instructions. But um, you, know, you can join us in person. You know following all the safety, uh, health and safety protocols. Our Wednesday evening service for the time being will only be um, streamed via Zoom and Facebook Live until further notice. Uh, Zoom virtual patio, that goes on every Wednesday and Sunday before, 20 minutes before service and then afterwards if you'd like to visit with fellow congregants. Our men's group meets at, from 11 to 11.30 every Sunday. All men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation continues Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15 a.m. All that information you can get at nhcrs.org, as well as the ability to sign up for our weekly blasts and monthly newsletters. Um, with that, I say we... Turn our awareness inward one more time. Just giving thanks for all the ways that that beautiful essence of the divine has made itself felt and realized throughout our time together. I know 
but just in coming together in love and opening to a greater understanding of the truth of God's presence within and around us, I know that healing and revealing has occurred. And so I give thanks right here, right now, for the blessings that we have received during our time and how they multiply as we go about our daily lives. And so in gratitude and gratitude for the capacity given to us of the divine within us to laugh, to be playful, I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be. And so it is. Amen. So thank you again for being with us this evening. Let's close out our service with Mary Highland leading us in the Blessed Always chant. Mm -hmm.